all the possibilities. I look around this room and I see nothing but possibility. You've, you've seen that commercial on television where Pinocchio, it's a Geico commercial I think, where it, Pinocchio doesn't lie well and he says, I see possibility and I see possibility, I see possibility or potential and then his nose keeps growing. Well, my nose is not growing. I am absolutely telling the truth. All I see in this room are possibilities. What a wonderful song. Do you know that most of your possibilities lie in your tongue? The tongue is one of the strongest muscles in the body, and your possibilities are in your tongue. I stumbled on this book the other day, Hung by the Tongue. <laughs> Hung by the Tongue. It got my attention. I was on Amazon buying something else. You know, people who like this also like this. So there's a long line of things that I might like, and this one really got me. It's a simple little book. It's by Francis Martin. He's the pastor of Family Life Christian Fellowship in the heart of Acadiana, Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm very familiar with that. My family are from Louisiana. I can imagine he's one of those fiery Louisiana preaching, yelling, screaming preachers. You know, the kind I grew up with. But hung by the tongue, a study of the words of your mouth, presented in serious simplicity, the truth of what you say is what you get. And that's where I got my title today. Not only from that, but from Flip Wilson. Oh, I see, I'm not just dating myself, I'm dating all of you. <laughs> Flip Wilson, his real name was Clero, Wil Clero Wilson. So he joined the Navy when he was 16, either the Navy or the Air Force. He changed, he lied about his age and he joined the Navy and he was always making jokes and making people laugh. And so his fellow Navy or seaman nicknamed him Flip because they said he was always flipping out. And so he would always say, the devil made me do it. Do you remember that? He would say, and Steve tells me he watches it on TV land. He watches him all the time. The devil made me do it. And you know, when you think about it, that's a classical denial. You know, you're not taking responsibility. It's not your fault. The devil made you do it. Not the kind of denials we talk about in unity, but it's a classical denial. Or he would say something like, uh, what you see is what you get. And that's a classical affirmation. But the truth is, your eyes play tricks on you. So what you see is not always what you get, but I guarantee you what you say is what you get. I'll give you a good example of that. A couple who were both 60, had been married 35 years, decided to have a big celebration for their wedding anniversary. And while they're in the middle of this celebration, all the toasts from family and friends, a fairy appeared. Imagine that, a fairy complete with wings and a wand. And she goes over to the wife and she says, I'll grant you one wish for your 35th anniversary. And the wife says, you know, I've always wanted a trip around the world. And the fairy godmother waved her magic wand and poof, in the wife's hands were two round trip tickets for a world cruise. She was excited. The husband was watching all this, and first he didn't think it was true, and then he was a little sheepish about saying what he really wished for, and finally she says, well, come on, I don't have all day, speak up. He says, okay. Now, honey, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but what I really would like to have is a wife 30 years younger. And the fairy godmother waved her wand, and poof, he was 90. <laughs> so be careful what you wish for. <laughs> So I'm going to talk to you about how the words we speak create what we want in our lives. And we say things sometimes and we don't mean what we say. But we really need to be careful what we say. And it all starts with our thoughts because everything starts in the mind first. In other words, as co-creators with the one creator, we create everything twice. Just as our one creator did in the mind first. So we think a thought, and then when we speak it, we have spoken it into action. So think about that. Now, we don't entertain every thought. We don't necessarily speak every thought. And thank God, because some of my thoughts you wouldn't want to hear. And I'm sure you feel that way at times. You know, Sometimes we need to be quiet when, when we're speaking instead of saying out loud what we're thinking. Have you ever been around someone who every time they open their mouth, they say something that really isn't, you know, you wish they hadn't said anything? They just can't keep those thoughts to themselves. 
Well, in the words of new thought leader, Florence Scovel Shin, and I don't know if you've ever read any of Florence's work, but she's one of my favorites when I first started into Unity all those many years ago. In her book titled Your Word is Your Wand, she actually says that we have magic in our mouths. You can create whatever it is you say. So, what do you think about that when I say what you think is what you get? What you say is what you get. Charles Fillmore had something to say about it in Keep a True Lent. He says, when one understands the power of words spoken in spiritual consciousness, the results are in fulfillment of divine law. When one understands the power of words in spiritual consciousness, the results are the fulfillment of divine law. You have in your mouth the ability to fulfill law, to make things happen. The principle in unity, and I don't know how many of you are new to unity. Are there any of you who are new to unity? So you understand the principles. Well, the principle today that we're talking about and what you say is what you get is that we create our reality through our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Now, let me say this. It's the intention behind those words. You, can, you cannot say the wrong word to the right people because they're going to hear what's in your heart. They're going to say, Palma didn't really mean to say that. That was a slip of the tongue. I know what she meant. You're going to begin to apologize for something you said, and, and they're going to say, oh, no, I understood you exactly. I know what you meant to say because you can't say the wrong words to the right people. The thing is to set your intentions behind your thoughts before you speak the word. So how do you do that? John Newton wrote the song Amazing Grace. How many of you are familiar with the song Amazing Grace? Well, you know John Newton was a slave trader. And he had a boatload of slaves from Africa in the middle of the ocean. And there was a storm. Worse than the storm I drove in this morning, coming from Lee Summit, Missouri, to here. There was a storm. And he was sure that they were going to perish in the storm. And so he prayed. He prayed one of those pray prayers that the Baptist preachers I grew up with prayed, begging and beseeching God to save them. But it's the intentions behind those preachings and those teachings that are most important. In his prayer later, when he actually was blessed by God and fulfilled his promise, he wrote a song. Now his prayer was, if God, if you save us, I will turn this ship around I will take them back to their country and I will join the abolitionist movement and I'll never slay, trade slaves again. So the storm passed over. He turned the boat around and he took them back. And in the process, he wrote Amazing Grace. And if you know in the words Amazing Grace, you hear that saved a wretch like me. Well, in Unity, when I first joined Unity, a lot of those old songs that I learned by memory were different. The words were changed. Because I learned in unity that words have power and thoughts are things. And our thoughts and our words have the ability to bring what we intend into fruition. And so we say that saved a soul like me. That saved a soul like me. But it's not important that John Newton may have considered himself a wretch because of the kind of business he was in. What's most important are, is his intention behind the word wretch. His intention was to be humble, to say, I know, God, you are mightier than me. You have all power. You're everywhere present. You're all knowing. And I'm just a little person, but I'll do my part. I'll be better. I'll take a page from Jesus and I'll live a better life and I'll do right by other people. It was his intention behind the word wretch that we need to pay attention to. Now, I had a good friend who introduced me to unity. And we would meet in a small group like this in a circle in the home of her neighbor. I'd never heard of unity. Grew up in Kansas City, Kansas, never heard of unity all those years. I did watch on black and white TV at the end of the day when I was able to stay up that late at night. Around midnight, Walter Winchell or some famous Doris Day or some famous celebrity. I know these names. I can see some of you may not even know who I'm talking about, but some of you do. I see you're nodding, Steve. <laughs> They would say the word for the day, and that's when the TV would go off. Now, you really, if, if you're that young, Alexis, my granddaughter's here, she's 19. I know she doesn't know anything about TV going off. 
because I hear it upstairs. She's in college. I hear it still on when she sleeps. So she doesn't know anything about TV going off. But there was a time, Alexis, when television would actually go off. And it wouldn't come back on until the next morning. And so there would be Walter Winchell or some celebrity, and they'd say the word for today. That's the most I knew, and that was the daily word, the most I knew about unity. But when I was introduced to unity and this concept of metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, it was like a world opened for me. And you may have had that experience when you first joined unity. And they would sit around the circle and they would discuss things that I had learned growing up as a child in the Baptist church, but in a different connotation. The words meant something a little bit different, or they spoke to me in a different way. And Joanne Franklin had this mantra, she would say. You would come up to Joanne and you'd say, how are you today, Joanne? And she, had, she, was, she stood about, well, I have to raise a little higher, I'm not that much taller, about five feet, maybe four feet eight. And she would say, I don't know when I've been better. She was a little lady with a, a squeaky voice. <laughs> and people would just smile, and they would feel better. And I, Joanne passed away a few years ago. She was a member of the original church on 9th and Tracy, Greg Nettler's church. And I can imagine that even in her last days, if Joanne could still speak, she would still be saying, I don't know when I've been better. And so that's the power of words. Most recently, I had a personal experience with that. My mom, who's 94, lives in Wyandotte County, had been in the hospital with pneumonia. And every time we'd ask her, how are you feeling today? Or her friends would call on the phone. She'd say, oh, my knee hurts. I, I'm just so sick. And I was so sick yesterday. And, I'm just, and she would just go through a litany of all these things that were ailing her. When she got released from the hospital, I was there with her one day. And the phone rang. And one of her good friends was calling to see how she was doing. And Mary, how are you? I've just been so sick. You just don't know how sick I've been. You know, growing old is, is, you know, a fact of life, but it sure is inconvenient. And she says that over and over again. And so finally, I, after the last call, I said, Mom, can I get you to do an experiment for me? Just try this. Now, she's very spiritual. And the things I'm telling her, she taught me. So you know how it is when you get older and you're, you become the parent in a way. You have to remind them of what they taught you. And I'm sure my children will be doing that in a few years. So I said, Mom, if you just try this for me, the next time someone asks you, how are you feeling? Say, I'm getting stronger and stronger every day. Because mom, if you change your words a little bit, just a little bit, you'll feel better. And so the phone rang and it was one of her best friends. And she's, how are you doing, Mary? I just wanted to check on you. I'm stronger than I was yesterday. She, could, she couldn't bring herself to say she's getting stronger, stronger, stronger every day. But even with those simple words, that simple change on vocabulary, I saw my mother's face brighten up right before my eyes. I saw her posture change. And the phone rang again, and she had practiced it. I'm better than I was yesterday. And she'd look at me like, am I getting it right? <laughs> I'm better than I was yesterday. <laughs> so, you know, we can change just a little bit of our vocabulary and change our whole life. And we can change it for other people. Imagine how good the other person felt on the other side of that call. If, if you ask me how I'm feeling and all I tell you is how bad I'm feeling and I want you to join with me in sympathy, I'm just feeling worse and so are you. You can't wait to get off that phone. <laughs> well, I'll t I gotta go. You know, I got another call. Phone's ringing. Gotta go. The man, somebody's at the door. You'll come up with any kind because it pulls you down as well. I saw a YouTube video recently that really hit home for me with this message. There was a gentleman sitting on the ground and he had a blanket beside him. And he had a sign, and the sign said, I'm, I'm blind, please help. I'm blind, please help. Now, I don't know about you in Manhattan, but in Kansas City, every other corner has a, someone with a sign needing some kind of help. And you don't always know if you should help or, you know, you, know, you think there are missions in other places for people who don't have a place. Should you, should you help or not? And so he's got this sign, and of course, people felt the same way. You could see them walking by and, you know, like with blinders on. And every now and then you see a coin tossed on the blanket, or you'd see maybe a, a dollar, maybe here. But you saw very little money there, and he's sitting there, and he can't see. This woman comes by, and she stands for long enough that he feels her energy, and he reaches out and feels her shoes. She picks up his sign, and she turns it over, and she scribbles something. You can't see what she's scribbling, and she puts the sign back down, and she walks away. Pretty soon, the next thing you see, other people are starting to put more money down. And you see this blanket filling up with change. 
And so the woman comes back. It must have been the end of her work day. And he can feel her shoes. She stood there long enough, and he could feel her energy. She wasn't one that just rushed by. And then he said, what did you do with my sign? And she says, well, it's the same words. It's the same thing you had, just different. And what she wrote really got me about the power of words. It's not what you say. Sometimes it's how you say it. She wrote, it's a beautiful day and I can't see it. That simple twist of words made all the difference in the world. And we can do the same thing with our lives. In Romans, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse, we read, call things that are not as though they were. So maybe when my mother answered the phone, she really wasn't feeling much stronger than she was yesterday. But when she began to, began to call that forth, she began to raise herself up. Myrtle Fillmore demonstrated that in her own life as co-founder of Unity. The very basis, the foundation on which Unity has been established is her healing. She spoke words of love and wholeness and health and joy and peace to every cell of her body. After hearing E.B. Weeks, Reverend E.B. Weeks speak, and what resonated with Myrtle, who was told she only had a few months to live at that time, was, I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. How many times have we said, well, you know, I got this from my father's side. You know, they have this ailment. Or, you know, I, 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 the whole family has this. I mean, you know, it's, it runs in my family. How many times have we said that? And that's not the truth. The truth is that you are a child of God. And therefore, you cannot inherit sickness. Words have power. In Charles Fillmore's book, The Revealing Word, he says words are affirmations of truth realized in consciousness that bring the mind into just the right attitude to receive light, power, and guidance from spirit, from within, from within you. You have everything in you to fulfill whatever it is you are here to be. Light and power and guidance within you. So now one thing I can say about words, when I, I used to see these, I watched TV a lot as a kid. I grew up with television. And one of the things I would see some, some TV show and the kids would be arguing over something and say, you take that back. Rachel, you take, Rochelle, you take that back. Palma, you take that back. Well, you can't take it back. Once said, it does not return. Someone has said four things do not come back. The sped arrow, the spoken word, neglected opportunity, and the past. The spoken word cannot be taken back. So once you say it, it's out there. So be careful what you say because you're affirming sometimes what you don't want through the words you speak. Buddha has said better than a thousand useless words is one word that gives peace. One word that gives peace. Now, I really like this quote, and Steve, it reminded me of your music today. Words have power. That's why poetry can affect people. That's why music and lyrics and songs have such an effect on people. And that's why chants and prayers and affirmations and all of those various things affect our frame of mind. We come here for that spirit to be lifted up. And the words that are spoken here and the music that's sung and the meditation that we experience all have to do with raising our consciousness. So I've talked a lot about words and how they work in some of my own examples. So what does this mean for you? Scripture tells us in Matthew, the 12th chapter, that by your words you will be justified. And by your words you will be condemned. Death in the tongue is what Proverbs calls it. We have the power of life and death in this muscle that we call the tongue. So from now on, this is what I would suggest. First of all, do you know that if you have a poor mouth, you'll have a poor life? Your riches 
or in your mouth. So make sure that every word you speak is in alignment with spirit, God consciousness, your Christ mind, your Buddha nature, your true self. Stop exaggerating your problems. Take a page from the late Joanne Franklin, and when someone asks, just say, I don't know when I've been better, in your own voice. <laughs> <laughs> Your words are so powerful that there are situations in your life right now just waiting for the right words from you to turn things around. And it doesn't happen overnight. But if you practice using the right words, you can change your life. You are loaded with enough power in your mouth to light up your world. So open your mouth and declare, let there be light. Practice speaking words like Myrtle did, of life and love and peace and joy and happiness, not only over your body, but over all of your circumstances. And say those words for people that you get along with and those with whom you have difficulties. We all have those. And they're here to teach us, to help us practice speaking words of truth. You can paint a brighter future with your words. You can affirm whatever you want from your life just by using your words. Because as scripture tells us, it's not what goes into the mouth. It's what comes out of it that gives us the greatest trouble. The words we speak have power. So I use a triage called TNN to think before I speak. Because there are times, like anyone else, when I just want to give somebody a piece of my mind. And then I know I won't have much left. So rather than just blurt out what you're thinking, try the TNN triage. Take a minute, step back. They used to tell us count to 10. Take a deep breath. Is it true? Is it nice? Is it necessary? If it doesn't meet one of any of those things, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. And I often say, bless them, change me. Because I am, we are reflections of each other's souls. So if I'm picking up a vibration, I must be vibrating at that same level. Bless them, change me. Is it true? Is it nice? Is it necessary? Now that gets into denials. And in unity, we deal with affirmations and denials. And deny those things that you no longer want to be a part of your life. Let it go. Don't focus on it. Don't repeat it. Don't keep singing about it. Don't keep harping on it. Don't keep telling everybody that calls you on the phone or happens to see you that you haven't seen in a while. Let me tell you what's been going on in my life. Poor, poor, pitiful me. Because if you have a poor mouth, you'll have a poor life. So, speaking of the power of words, how many of you are internet savvy? Let me just say, how many of you are not totally savvy with the computer? I'm going to raise my hand. I can do a lot of things, but there are things I don't, you, you just do them with such ease. I don't know how to do well, I just heard this story about uh, a handyman husband. And my husband's some, somewhat of a handyman. I can call him at work and say, Phil, I can't get this or that. And he'll say, OK, well, I'll do it when I get home, or here's what you need to do. So this woman calls her. She texts her handyman husband. And she says, honey, and in her text, you know, you have to abbreviate in text. She says, windows won't open, frozen. He texts her back. He says, honey. Gently pour some lukewarm water over it and gently tap the edges with a handle, hammer. The wife texts back five minutes later in all caps, computer really messed up now. <laughs> Be careful your words because sometimes, you know, words have power and we can be easily mistake words for something else. It's intention behind the words. While visiting his daughter and son-in-law over a weekend, this elderly father had a difficult problem with words. Uh, he wanted to use their computer. And he said, honey, uh, what is your password for your Wi-Fi? And she said, dad, it's taped under the modem. And he tried three times unsuccessfully. And finally, he says, am I spelling this right? I-T-S-T-A-P-E-D U-N-D-E-R-T-H-E-M-O-D-E-M. -E -E it's taped under the modem. So you got to be careful 
the words you speak because they can be easily misinterpreted. So, when I was about in the seventh grade, I was inducted into the National Junior High School Honor Society. And Mrs. Williams had us say different verses from the Bible. And I said one that at the time I didn't understand, but I memorized it. And it's from Proverbs. Get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Now, that was Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. I think I've gotten a little wisdom in my old age, but I'm still getting that understanding. So I want to ask you, I've tried to share with you wisdom that I have and nothing new, because you all have that wisdom. I want to know, do you now have a little more understanding? How does this apply to my life? That's what I got most from unity. I knew the scripture and I knew the Bible and knew a lot of things from my upbringing, but I didn't understand the relationship, the personal relationship to the Bible and myself, to Christianity and myself, to religious teachings and myself until I got into unity. And I didn't know about this thing about how your words have power and your thoughts are things. But Lao Tzu said it best. He was a sixth century philosopher and said to be the father of Taoism. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. And watch your character. It becomes your destiny. We create twice. We create in the mind first. And then through our thoughts, words, and actions and habits, we create our own reality. Our words have the power to change our lives, and if we pay attention to how we think and what we say, we can change our circumstances forever. Change your words, change your world. What you say is what you get. Namaste.